Welcome internet, Two Blue Fred here, and on today's agenda, we're going to go see in search of the best pizza in South Carolina. We are going to a place called Papa Gio's. They have about five locations scattered throughout. There's one, not too far from where I live, maybe uh, 45 minutes or so. We're going to go check that out and see what happens along the way. I uh, hope you tag along, and we'll see how this pizza is together. First, I'm going to stop and get some gas, and then we'll be on our way. Rolling down the country road, sing along with David Allen Co. I always give her the good stuff. Honda recommends it, and even though there's a knock sensor on this bike, I just, uh, the fuel mileage seems better, and it does tend to run, just, it just runs better. I know a lot of guys will disagree with me, and I've saved a lot more money by not running premium. The only time I've ever not ran premium in this bike is when we were up in the Yukon heading towards Alaska. It wasn't available. You either took the 87, hell it might have been 85, or you were walking because there is a long stretch of road between available gas and the Yukon. So me and Blue were talking the other day, I still got a Facebook page from when we took that trip that still gets activity and we still have the bikes that we took to Alaska. So we're going to do a preparing for Alaska trip and what to expect video. I mean, there's a lot to it. And we spent a ton of money preparing the bikes for the trip. And we probably went overkill in many departments. But, you know, when you're on a long trip like that, you want the bike how you want it. You want to add all these things to it because you're going to be living off the bike for three weeks out of the league. So for me, it was, it was mostly about comfort, power, power to charge things I needed, which were mostly GoPro, obviously a cell phone, headset, CB, or just a lot of things to power on that trip. I'm probably missing a few things. Looking back, I'd probably never spend the money on the lights like I did because the time of year we went, which was June, it never got dark. Even once we got up to the top of the United States, it only got dark like four hours a night. I don't exactly remember, but it was something like, you know, it might start getting dark 10, 30, 11, and by four o'clock in the morning, the sun was coming back up. But once we hit Alaska, it never got dark. For the most parts on my bikes anyway, the lighting that I add is more to be seen. Although I have used them to see at night many times. I'm just not primarily a, a night rider by any means, but occasionally it happens and you just roll with it and be glad you got your lights. Do you think there'll be any trouble along the way? Locked in and nowhere to go. Wow. Part of the Haven. Me and Blue, we like going to the dealers for several reasons. One, it breaks up the ride, so we get off the bikes and get to walk around. Often they have free water, soda, beer, popcorn, pizza hot dogs, whatever, depending on what day you're in there. And we collect the uh, the poker chips. Just a little memento of where you've been. And the air condition is always nice in, in the summer. And they may have some new bikes, some one-off bikes. And I mean, who don't like looking at bikes? A lot of stereotypes in the Harley world. The people who have no idea, you know, one, that they're slow, they leak oil. Maybe was somewhat true back in the day. I don't get up and go, and Blues is even faster than that. You could have bought a five faster bike. Yeah, you know what? Damn, there it is right there. You could have bought a faster car. You didn't buy no damn Lamborghini, no Ferrari, driving around in a damn SUV. So the argument doesn't make sense. I think it's just more, more hate to spew is all it is. I mean, I was the same way. I talked trash and repeated those same lines all the time. But, you know, we spent a lot of time in Daytona Bike Week. And Harley just simply has the best setup for demo, demoing bikes. And after riding for years, we'd go down there for hours every day. 
and for de after demoing them bikes for years um, we fell in love with them alright here we are Papa Geo's says use the other door so let's go in here and order something probably gotta have a damn mask on so sick of COVID all right, I'll be back. Oh, let me tell you. I can tell already. This pizza is going to be fabulous. Papa Gio's. Let me tell you why. Because there is a little Italian man in there making pizzas. The original Elizabeth's Pizza in Greensboro, North Carolina. That I started going to. Reminds me a lot of this place, or this place reminds me a lot of that place. They had three Italians working in there, they could hardly speak English. And they have the same type of ovens. And they did me right, so check this. I ordered a calzone, a cheese slice, and a slice of Sicilian. After I'm thinking it's all ready, and I'm about to walk out, he comes up to me and says, I'll make pizza wrong. It's my fault. Give me five, give me ten minutes. I'll make it right. I like I, I like I like mushrooms. He said it was supposed to be black olives and onion, and he put mushroom and onion on it. I'm like man, it's all good. I said I like mushrooms just as well. He's like no no, I make it I make it wrong. I make it right. Just give me ten minutes. You can take them both. I was like score. I'm not gonna be too judgmental on the pizza. So you can buy pizza by the slice there, which you know they kind of half cook it and stick it out on the rack. And you come by and say, I want a slice of this, slice of that. And then they reheat it so it's nice and hot. But what I found, even though those are still pretty good, it doesn't give you a real representation. The crust sometimes just gets a little overcooked when they do it that way. Even if it's the best I've ever had, I'm not gonna tell you. It's the best I ever had without getting a fresh one made we'll see how this is and if it's that good I'll come back soon and get a fresh one hopefully they're not charging damn there's somebody in there are you charging ah even if I just want to eat lunch over there all right thank you Ah, fingers. Right across the dam. Oh no, that, yeah, that's a, that's a vulture. Turkey vulture. It turned just slightly in the sun. I thought it might be an osprey. But it's not. It's definitely a turkey vulture. And then I got this side closed off. This is the horrible way to eat the hell with Jacobia. No picnic tables. That's what I'm talking about right there. don't quite have that golden mm. Mm. that is Elizabeth's pizza reincarnated holy crap Got the flavor. Mm. Now, 
what I said was, I'm gonna have to go back and get a fresh one, if that was any good. It's got the right taste, I'm gonna have to go get a fresh one. I'm not sure when. So as soon as Blue gets back in town, that's gonna be a lunch spot. While I was over, I got a slice of Sicilian, so we're gonna try that now. Looks like they gave me two slices. Look at that. I'm not a big Sicilian guy, but I do like it. Not bad. That's pretty good. Dano's definitely got them beat in that area. I have no fork or knife. Marinara. Now a little marinara. Well, I'm going to be honest, all three, the calzone, the Sicilian slice, and the New York were all really good. As you can see, I also didn't spend a lot of time here eating them. One, it's just really hot. Two, there's nowhere really good to sit down and eat. I did the best I could, which is eat off the seat of the motorcycle. The New York slice, I'm definitely going back with blue. Maybe next week. Get a fresh slice, we'll eat inside now that I know they're open. The Sicilian, it has a ton of potential. Again, they, they grab it off the rack and they throw it back in the oven. And that probably loses, definitely lost the heat. It wasn't very, it was warm, but it wasn't hot. I'm not saying that's their fault. You know, they did have to make remake my calzone. And then I drove 10 minutes to, to the lake, which ended up being a bust. So I'm gonna hold judgment on all three as far as giving it a rank. I am just as much a calzone man as I am a New York pizza man. And the sauce was spectacular. It was scorching. Definitely this. If you're in the area, it's 
Swing by Papa Geo's. Look in your area and see if there is one. So I'm just going to ride back to the house. I'll probably let the video record for a little while. If you want to follow along, maybe something will happen. Maybe it won't. Two Blue Fred. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you're notified when you upload a new video. Leave a comment below of your favorite pizza places in South Carolina. Who has the best pizza in South Carolina? That's the topic. It'll be a recur recurring series for sure. Mr. Popo. Today we took the ST, 1300. And it's got to stretch its legs every once in a while. On a little trip like this, which is, you know, what, a couple hours. The only thing I really miss is the stereo, which some of y'all might enjoy because I'm not singing into the microphone. Thinking that I sound good. And those cows on for dinner today. Can't wait. Miss Blue does not like mushrooms. Think I ought to mess with the green Mustang? <laughs> Think I can take him? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I can take him. Who buys a lime green Mustang? I mean, who's that guy? Is he a middle child looking for that attention? You see that thing a mile away? I wonder if that's like a super fast one. I can hear it. I'd run him with my big fat ass on this lane. Watch somebody comment in the <laughs> comment below that that's like the 502 horsepower boss or some shit. $80,000 Mustang or something. <laughs> Craft axe throwing. That sounds like beer and axes. Well, good ideas. Guns and beer. Don't get me wrong, I like my beer. You want to see a big cock? <laughs> I think it's funny. Keep it moving. trying to zoom past all these cars. The second car up there now is a county man. So we have some S ST fans in the house. It's my 09. You may or may not have seen my last video on this bike. It's practically the only video I have that's really gained traction. about it in the last video one of the a complaint kind of kind of kind of the heat that comes off this engine now as you can see my legs are not on the tank and it's 88 degrees when it's a hundred plus this thing will roast your legs I rode this bike one time in shorts it was so hot and it burnt right leg. Not like a burn burn, but it was all red. And it felt like it was being burnt. So I'll never wear wear shorts on this bike. Which I know you're not supposed to anyway. It was like a short little ride. This bike here is actually hotter than my Harley. People talk about how hot the Harleys are. That ain't nothing compared to this bike. 
George says his Harley is hotter than his Honda. But it's from where he says the the heat comes out from the fairing. See that it's further forward. It's not right here at your legs. So so you'll love it in the cooler days, despite being so hot. It'll 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 somewhat keep you warm. Your legs anyway. If you hug the tank with your legs. In the summer, just just simply keep your legs off the tank as much as possible. 